Today I'm with Billy Baldwin and Mike Chastain to talk about Blind Faith, a new movie that's being shot here in Jacksonville. Billy, can you tell me a little bit about the movie? I think Mike is much better suited <laughs> simply because it's based on his life story. Uh, let him start and I'll, I'll do some color commentary. Sounds good. Now, this is a true life story about you. Can true, you t right. tell me about this a little bit? Well, it's, I always kind of describe it like people say, well, what, what's the deal with the movie? I said, it's kind of like the movie Rudy, only more intense. You know, Rudy played football at Notre Dame, a little bit undersized, and that was his problem. My problem playing football, I was totally blind. So, <laughs> a little more of a challenge. There. Yeah, and uh, but I always, I was a very good athlete in high school, a very good wrestler, worked out in the weights constantly, and it was just kind of a tough kid. Right. And uh, but I always loved football. So, I was, my it was the spring of my junior year. I said, you know what, I got one shot to try to play football, and it's next year, my senior year. After that, it's done. I says, you know what, I'm, I'm crazy for doing this, but I'm going to ask the football coach. If I can try out and thinking there's no way he's going to let a blind kid play football. It's about as crazy as you can think. It's such a violent sport. And right. I went down there, brought it up to him. He says, yeah, you got a shot. And, you know, fall rolls around and I'm out there and I said, well, what, you know, I already figured out what position I could play it would be middle guard on defense where it's just a bunch of violent collisions in the middle of the line. That's it. You're just clogging the holes. That's all you're doing. Firing yeah. out and filling the holes. Yeah. Hungry for contact. Oh, well, I remember this I, when I was made an honorary member of the NFL uh, National Football League's NFL Players Association. Uh, Bill Cosby handed me my the plaque at the Conrad Hilton Hotel in Chicago, and Alex Karras, who's played defensive tackle for the yeah. for the Detroit Lions, That's right, yeah. Yeah, he was the MC, and he kind of said, you know, this is really great that this kid did this, and I really appreciate being here, but he says, you know, I played 14 years in the NFL, and I used to shut my eyes on every play, because he played basically, <laughs> I mean, that's what he said, because he played basically the same position, so I knew you didn't have to see to play that position, right. at, least, at least my opinion was right. that way, and I knew I could do it, I'm not saying every blind kid could, but I knew I could, right. and the coach gave me the opportunity, and uh, it was one heck of a football season, that's for sure. Well, how did this become to, come to the point where it's a movie now? Well, um, you got an hour? <laughs> that's yeah this it's, it's and it's not done yet so I know that's no. another hour right well, yeah. well you know what sum it up it was meant to be we no. met with the right people at the right time and the right combination of things happened and here we are right. now if I understand it correctly this is a faith-based movie as well right and I see there's a there's a good trend towards more of those faith-based movies there's where he's the expert yeah. tell me a little bit about well that. you know we you know um, there's been a lot of groups and a lot of families and a lot of churches that have been complaining about the stuff coming out of Hollywood. I've been in those films, you know. I've been in films that they've liked and I've been in films that they don't like. And I have no problem at all with films like controversial films being made. I was in a film called Sliver that was very controversial. There's a market for it. There's an audience for it. There's a demand for it. Um, and this is going to be a very interesting test. The economy contracted, you know, the housing market contracted, and so did production in Hollywood. And now with less production, you have fewer opportunities for actors and they're looking for even with a huge cut in pay they're just looking for a great part and a great script and they don't want to be away from their families for three or four months so along comes this great wholesome family movie the things that are selling right now in hollywood are sort of horror thriller genre number one comedy number two and really really wholesome family faith or, or, or not, you know, whether there's, whether there's some sort of, you know, biblical message or not, right. but just some real good, all-American, wholesome family entertainment. They're very, very big right now. They're very popular. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity that we're going to get a chance to make this film because, you know, there isn't stunts and car chases and, and things blowing up and action right. sequences and CGI special effects. It's, it's Mike's story. It's the writer, the pen, the word, the director, the actors. And you could make a really, really, really good movie uh, with this on a, on a, you know, a, a fairly low budget. I don't know what the budget's going to come in on on this, but you know, you could make this movie and, you know, have your cake and eat it and make this sure. movie for five or six million dollars. And you're going to generate the local, you know, you're going to stimulate the local economy. You're going to create jobs, and we're going to make a, a, a wonderful little movie. And that's where I, I'm, I, my problem isn't making the movie or are we going to make a great film my my issue is and my challenge is that people are out there complaining that there's not enough of this out there and all of a sudden we're going to provide this opportunity and it's all based on supply and demand people watch keeping up with the kardashians for a reason i mean they keep making keeping up with the kardashians for a reason because people watch it and if you want more stuff like this when this movie opens 
the, the, the only way you'll see more of it and you'll see a lot more of it is if it makes 10 or 12 million dollars on the opening weekend. You make this movie for four, five, six million dollars and it opens to 10 or 12 million dollars on the opening weekend. Watch, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Universal, Disney, they're all going to put a half a dozen of these into development. And that's got to be part of the plan, right? I mean, Disney makes great wholesome family movies, but they're all animated. Right. You know, not everybody, I mean, you know, I want, the this last, life, I, have, right? I have an 11, 10, and 7 year old. The last, out of the last 12 movies I've seen, 11 of them are like animated kids movies. Right. I want to go to a movie with my kids where there's something for them, but there's something for me too, you know? But there is this trend of doing uh, inspired by or true life stories that's coming back again, like Dolphin Tale and those type of movies. Do you think this fits within that? I think it's like Soul Surfer, right. you know, I think that, that 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 story, that message, you know, uh, overcoming adversity in your life. Uh, I was speaking earlier, I was at the NCAA wrestling championships this year in Philadelphia and the kid won the national championship at 125 and he was born with one leg, right. a kid from Arizona State named Anthony Robles. And you know, that's, that's, you know, similar to Mike's story. It's similar to the girl in Soul Surfer Store. One minute she's in the water paddling away and the next minute she gets attacked by a shark. And what does she do? Does she lie down? You know, look at this girl that just, I just saw on the news yesterday, the girl that walked into the prop of the plane and got her arm hacked off and got hit in the face and lost her left eye. Guess what? That, they're going after the rights to that one, I'm sure, any minute now, because that's going to be, if this woman gets back on her feet and moves forward in her life and becomes a, a, you know, a, a, a pr productive, contributing, participatory member of her community, you know, what a beautiful story for her to come back from something like that. Now, Mike, when you were playing football, did you ever in your wildest dreams think, hey, they're going to make a movie about me? Absolutely not. I was just worried about the next day's practice. It, it, I'll tell you what the craziest thing was. It, none of us succeeded in everything in life right. and not even close so but I, I'll go out there and try it if I want to do it I'll try it I might you know but I'm gonna give it all the effort I can I never quit on anything didn't always win but I never quit on anything well I'll tell you something I the scare one of the scariest times of my life where I almost had to quit was on that football field because something happened to me that I caught me out of left field like you wouldn't believe I I use my hearing like a bat uses its hearing that's how I get around that's how I adjusted as I was slowly going blind from the age of 5 to 14. Well, I was very good at it, but you know when I wasn't? The first day I put on that football helmet and completely distorted my hearing. Oh, yeah. Freaked me out. Yeah, yeah. I, I came so close to How about to when you had, had a headgear on in a wrestling match? All you hear is like, oh, yeah. When you have a headgear on, <laughs> yeah. your coach is yelling something to you, the fans are all screaming, you can't hear a word anybody's Charlie saying. Brown's teacher, right? Exactly. <laughs> but see, at, at that point, I'd been wrestling for so many years, I adapted to that headgear. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn to adapt, but real quick with that football mm -hmm. helmet, mm -hmm. like about within five minutes. <laughs> right. So that was, it was almost, could I really walk up to this coach who gave me this opportunity and say, look, coach, I can't do it. I just could it was, it was quite a, I'll never forget that feeling. But, almost having to say, no, I can't, I, I got to quit before I start. This but. is a great message for my son. My son's 10 years old, he plays football, he plays basketball, he plays baseball, and you know, you talk, he sees this movie and he meets Mike, and I talk to him about Mike, and I, all I ever say to my son, he's got a basketball game today at six o'clock, and I'm gonna talk to him before the game out in Santa Barbara, and you know, the message is, you know, work hard and, and leave it on the court. Right. Just leave it on the court. And you know, if you win by 10, great. If you lose by 15, if you left it on the court, uh, who's got a Who's got a problem with that? Absolutely, you know, yeah. Who's got a problem? With I feel that? about it. It's, well, it's I say good luck to you guys on this movie, and I hope it, it does become the success that you want it to be. And I really appreciate you guys being on the show. Yeah. Well, thank you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Respond with a video comment. Leave a written comment below, or subscribe to our YouTube channel.